doom. All right. Come on, bro. This is the first play of the game. First play of the game. And this is what they let rock. This is basically basketball positioning. And so now you look at the game, you're like, we lost by six. These are the possessions, like I was saying before, that you just don't want to have to go and look at and be like, that's basic stuff. I knew I should have did this, but you just ain't do it. Those are the ones that hurt. Then Kyrie, Kyrie. I'm not going to talk about too much of what they did well, but still, just know their offense could get hot. It could be cold, but the defense is a whole completely different thing. I trust them to be able to keep up with the score of other teams, but I don't know if they'll be able to keep up with the stops. And that's what we're really going to get into most of this video. You know? Now Kyrie matchup. Boom. But mind you, the Mavs are the worst rebounding team in the NBA. If you look at their roster, who are you going to look at their roster who's in the rotation? Who you can say, okay, he can give me 10 boards a night. Except for Luka. Luka's the only player who say, you can say, okay, he's going to give me 10 boards this night. Everybody else is like four, three, six, maybe seven. They're dead last in NBA rebounds. So that's just tough. And they give up a lot of offensive rebounds as well. Hey, don't even mean to say this about Dennis Smith, about Luka Doncic's defense. I know. I know Luka Doncic is really good. I know players like Luka and Jokic are really good, right? But they're defensive liabilities. They're going to get exploited often. But what Luka has to do and players like Jokic have to do to make up for this is play defense by knowing more personnel and by playing positions. So you get a situation where you can see Dennis Smith Jr. trailing right here at the three-point line. Don't even think about stepping up. You turn to see him, you drop back. You already go. Forget that. It's Dennis Smith Jr. Rather let him take a three than let him get downhill and go and attack the lane because you already know what bounce Dennis Smith Jr. got. You don't even need to speak on that. And this is one thing that just... I was just, this just pointed out. It was like your transition defense. They gave up a shit ton of transition buckets. Like, it was just like they got back and there's no communication. There's minimal communication. And it just, they played with no sense of urgency, bro. You would think a team that's out the play in right now would play with some sort of urgency. But they had no urgency, bro. Like, it was like none. Mm. And now you may see this Kyrie matchup and be like, oh, they got Kyrie. Of course their defense isn't going to be good. Because Kyrie, Kyrie's not a good defender. Kyrie is a good defender, mind you. Don't, don't sleep on Kyrie. Kyrie is good at playing positions. He's good at the skill of defense. He's just undersized. And by the way, make sure you subscribe, like, and turn on notifications because we drop breakdown videos daily. And if you want to catch my breakdowns live, make sure you go hit that link in the description. Go follow, and let's get right back to it. And if you're undersized in this league, you can't be a great defender. You could, at max, be good. So, if you're thinking of saying, oh, they added Kyrie, of course they're not going to have any defense. They just had Spencer Dinwiddie. Is Spencer Dinwiddie a two-way lockdown player? No. They just had Jalen Brunson. Is Jalen Brunson a, a lockdown player? No. If anything, Kyrie is better than those dudes on defense. So, don't think they added Kyrie and you're like, oh, their defense is obviously going to get worse. They got Kyrie. He's replacing Dinwiddie and replacing Brunson. That He's playing, filling that same role. And matter of fact, he's a better defender than those two guys. In terms of skill on the defensive side, it got better. And on top of that, his offense is his defense. Because now, even though you may try and go score on him, he's going to come back and score on you. And he's offensively much better than all those guys, respectfully. Respectfully. I mean that to say, you can't, you can't just look at Kyrie and be like, oh, he's the reason their defense is bad. Kyrie, you got Kyrie. You can't play. No, Kyrie can actually play defense. I made a whole video on it on my YouTube. I made a whole video on it talking about he can actually play defense. So... Yeah, I ain't going to lie. You know... <laughs> They have Mark Williams looking like a goddamn all-star in this motherfucker. He had 15 and 16. <laughs> the Mavs, what they need to do, go into this offseason, is get an interior presence. You just need a player like who could get lobs, kind of like Powell can. You don't have to be as good. But get lobs and get boards, because Powell can't get boards like that. So you need a player who could really be able to be a presence on the inside defensively. That's something they got to find, especially on the defensive side, because you got to establish your defense around something, because you don't got guys that could really guard and be able to get the stops that you need. Because you lost Dorian Finney-Smith. Finney-Smith, a really good perimeter defender. He guarded the best wings every night. So, that's tough. Tough that you lost him, bro. Underrated loss for the Mavericks. Another offensive rebound, bro. They're like minus 21 to the Hornets on rebounds. Or like minus 20. Mm. Luka. You peep Luca, right? End of the first. They're down 14. 
It's 30 to 16. You scored 16 points in the first quarter against the Charlotte Hornets. They had absolutely no energy, bro. And you would think that a team, like I said before, that's missing the plan would play this game with more urgency. I'm trying to get his bucket at the last second. And then look at Luka. Luka did say he's not enjoying basketball as much. It's been tough because, of course, you've been losing. And he says he's been dealing with some stuff off the court, but you're trying to find your court as your safe space. But your safe space is something that's still bringing more stress to you. So it's, all the things are coming on to him, but he's going to have to find a way to get himself up out of there and really start getting back into his groove, get things going again. And especially if you see your best player on your team sulk, drop their head, that's going to hurt a lot of your teammates because it's, it's like he's our leader. He's a guy that's just like, okay, we can't fuck up when he's around. You know what I'm saying? He's that guy. So they see you. You see you drop your head. It gets contagious in a sense, you know. And boom, Tim Hardaway Jr., man. Tim Hardaway Jr. I don't think they're using Tim Hardaway Jr. the right way. I think they could utilize him a little more, especially since uh, Finney Smith is gone. Since Finney Smith is gone. Now, first you're going to be like, he doesn't defend that well. And maybe like a Josh Green could fit the role better next to them. But the thing is that like Josh Green can't really hit shots. You're still going to need to be able to pass that ball up. Someone who's going to bring you some some energy. Josh Green brings you energy, but Tim Hardaway Jr. does the same thing as well. He brings you energy not just offensively because he could get hot in the snap. He gives you energy defensively because he competes defensively. He's not just going to sit back and just let somebody blow right by him. He's just not going to sit back and let somebody get right over the top. He's going to compete defensively. He's not no outstanding defender, but he's going to compete. He's going to give you energy. Combine that together, that can help fix some of the slow starts that they have, especially in games like this. When you're playing on a what, a Sunday afternoon in Charlotte against the second worst team in the NBA, a guy like Hardaway Jr. is gonna compete every night. And anytime he gets hot, it's a huge relief for Luka, for Kyrie. And now you got somebody picking up that scoring load. Once again, Kyrie mismatch, just undersized. Just undersized, bro. Mm. Like I was saying, Luka, got to play positions. You know you're guarding Dennis Smith. So anytime a pass gets thrown right there, don't even try to go and close out. Close up the lanes. Get into those lanes before you try to go up and get into his body. But you see Luka come up over here. He turns around. He steps forward. He's just not quick enough to get there. That's why you got to be able to play positions and be able to play personnel. And that's how you can make up for some of those disadvantages you have for your athleticism and your quickness on defense. Transition once again. Transition once again. This transition defense is maybe getting killed in transition. You see Luca right here. He should just grab the ball, but Luca's not really comfortable guarding the ball, and he already be doing a shit ton on offense. So it's like, oh, you grab it. But now it's in a position where it's like, damn. Now he got a whole lane to get through. Buck Knight takes it on. Got to play positions. Huh? Theo, some I don't know, but then Luca closes out, gets too far forward. He just needs to learn his positioning and be able to control himself in these situations. I know he could do it too. I know he could improve his agility to the point where he could play better, play better positions, be more agile, stay in front of some of these guys. But it's something he's really got to work on himself and be like, okay, I got to tighten up on this because if I really want to be the leader of this team, I've got to kind of show some sort of leadership, not just on offense but on defense as well. So that's where it's gonna have to start. Luca may be out of there like 2019, Bron. He might be out of there. Transition defense, bro. Transition defense. Transition defense, bro. Tell me, do you see anybody really communicating? Can you, do you see anybody really communicating, bro? Do you? You just see a bunch of guys just running back to the other side of the floor. It's no communication, no matching up, no get this, get this, get that, get that. You would be able to tell if players are matching up. Now, Luke is about to get hot. That first quarter, he made no field goals in that first quarter. And then he had, like, what, six points at the end of the first? He ended the night with 40. You're about to see Lucas start cooking. You're about to see Lucas start cooking. Watch. He about to start cooking, ladies and gentlemen. He's about to start cooking. It's that same step back. That same step back. Out that right hand, that little bring back shot. That shit, especially if you got pace, that move is so good to use. But mind you, it goes back on the other side, and he gets attacked. Now, I don't think anybody's going to be able to win a shootout against Luka Doncic, especially in a situation like this. 
I don't know if anybody's going to win that. But he's still going to get attacked on the other side. So, hey, bro, Lucas hitting shots off the catch now. Off the catch. Hey, you know we got to cook him. You know we got to cook him. Another one. Same curl. God damn. He, bro, that's what? Four threes right there? That's a chase down block by Luka Doncic. What the f***? Luka. Wait, wait, wait. Imagine getting chased down block by Luka Doncic. But even then, they gave up another offensive rebound. They got the two. That's tough, bro. Transition and another rebound, bro. That's why everybody's got to get back in the play. Now, this whole time when I was saying Lucas should start playing positioning on defense and not really just going off of instinct and just, just going, this is what I mean. Where, boom, he's recovering and he's playing spots. He's playing spots because that's me. It's going to be hard for somebody to get through Luka if he's playing the right spot. So that means you got to hit him in his chest and he's gotta, you've got to create space off of that. Luka's a big dude. So to get really get through him. That's going to be tough straight up. So just a little bit of agility work, some learning positioning, learning angles, really playing the personnel, catching yourself in the moment and the speed of the game. Luca's defense could be able to close up some of those gaps that he has for his lack of speed and whatnot. Look how slow he's going, bro. You don't got to be that fast to really get into an ISO and do something. You don't got to be that fast, bro. Just watch Luca. You'll really realize it's like, oh shit. And then you'll go to the gym and really just slow down. And you'll be like, oh shit. I don't got to go this fast, bro. You don't got to. I ain't gonna lie. He might have traveled, but I don't know. But still, he, yeah, he traveled. Step with the left. Ball doesn't come down. But hey, that's still a tough shot. And that's why Tim Hardaway Jr., I believe, should be in that starting lineup and be get some more playing time for this Mavs team. Because one thing they could do, because shit's been going left. Shit has not been going smooth. Put Hardaway Jr. in that lineup and also replay and put Kleba in at that five. But I would say Christian Wood, but we're going to get to that in a little bit. And they need to begin to make rebounding a team effort and not just a one-person effort, two-person effort. They need to rebound as a team. Turnover, transition defense, like I said before, and they got another rebound. It's all defensive, except for that turnover. But all the things I've been talking about in this video is all defensive. Yeah, and I was like, you see, at this point in the game, I was like, why don't they use Christian Wood more? They came from Dallas, uh, Houston. He was just averaging like 20 points a game. He could shoot. He only had like 15 minutes this game. And I was like, oh, oh. That's why he doesn't play. The defense, bro. It's just the defense. Just the defense, bro. Just the defense. I seen this and I was like, that's one shitty ass drop coverage. Sorry, but it's, it's the truth. It's the truth, bro. No disrespect, bro. This is what it is. Dude's only been playing like 20 minutes. Now, that's what he can do. He can score. He can hit shots. All that shit. He can do all that stuff. But he can't play defense, and that's something that Luka can't do. But let's talk about what Luka did just do. Quick. His angles. Like I just said, watch his angles. Look how sharp he is. But Pete, he's coming off that little hang dribble. Then boom, as soon as he gets into that tween, watch how sharp his angle is when he goes to attack that rim. He goes almost through that shoulder of P.J. Washington instead of trying to go all the way around it. A lot of players like to go and make this move and try to get around the player, but you really got to make that angle sharp and really force them to get open as you go go and drive. And then boom, Luke again to his little little Kyrie bag, you know, learn a little bit from Kyrie. Learn a little bit, you know what I'm saying? Boom, I'm telling you, Hardaway. Hardaway's spot up shooting, the spacing he brings is gonna be is is gonna help with that defense. Whereas like a player like Josh Green just has the defense. Hardaway Jr.'s offense is gonna be his defense, and then he's gonna compete on the defensive side. And he's gonna help you bring more on both sides because if he gets hot one and then two, he's also gonna compete. And competing can get contagious. Especially on a night when nobody got energy and you got that guy who's just ready to go, ready to work, like Tim Hardaway Jr., they need to put him in that starting lineup. At least do something, change it up telling you he's competing he's competing he's competing 
You see him any game, you may be like, oh, he's not no outstanding defender. But I believe he's above average, especially at perimeter defending. You see him compete every night. And that's all you can ask for out of the player. Their best efforts every night. Once again, even though Luka is on the floor, Christian Wood is the one to get attacked. That just means they see him more as a player to exploit than Luka. And that kind of tells you something. It's like, damn, okay, I'll kind of see why he hasn't been playing crazy minutes. Because to play around Luka, to play around Kyrie, you're going to have to bring something a little different from what they have because you're not, you're not as good on offense as they are. So you're going to have to bring something a little different, provide something that they can provide instead of being repetitive, try to do something that they do, but you really don't need too much more of it. It's a little different, just a little. Boom. Hornets in transition once again. Are they going to tighten up on their transition defense, bro? There's a hell of a lot of fucking fast break points, bro. And if you're going to take a bunch of long threes, you better get your ass back. If you've been taking these threes, there may be some long rebounds. You better get back. You better get back, bro. And you get it's not like you're there way behind the numbers either. It just seems like there's no urgency, bro. Like I was saying, like there's no fight there's no somebody who's really bringing that energy someone's really leading that side of the ball so i'm saying they need some sort of defensive centric player and now they're just killing at this point bro 98 102 they just had the lead bro they just had the lead and now they go back to the defensive end or offensive side misses it's just getting tough Top of the fact that it's hard for you to get stops. Y'all don't even play fast. So even if you do get a rebound, it's hard to get out and get some easy buckets. So it should get tough. So now they're starting to get playing in the half court. Since they play in the half court, things get a little more stagnant. Players may not have their rhythm, have their flow. And there's going to be nights where you're going to miss shots. Straight up. It's going to happen. All teams, there's going to be nights where you're going to miss shots. So that's going to be the huge factor for the Mavs. Because you get into the playoffs, you get to a team, at night you're missing shots. It's not like you could go, go back on that other end and establish your presence because you're not a deep, you're good defensive team. So you're going to really just have to bank on making a shit ton of shots. So just put in a, a lineup with more offense. Maybe even say, fuck it, go Christian, put, uh, nah, not Christian Wood, but just put Kleeb at that five and put Hardaway Jr. in at that three and for Josh Green. And really just go away with that lineup as much offense as you can have because somebody may just get hot. So, all right. The highest jumper in the entire state at the moment. The, the highest jumper in a maybe like a 400-mile radius, right? Dennis Smith Jr. You let him loose. You let him free. You lost sight of him. Bully right here. No communication. Just like your transition defense. No communication. No communication. Just all assumption. Just all, oh, I think I'm going to do this. I think I'm going to do that. But nobody knows exactly what you should be doing. So they're getting caught in the wrong spots damn near every time, bro. This is in the regular half court. A minute left in the game. Like, this should not be happening, bro. It would be dangerous if somebody was actually over there. Now, they have possessions when they was doing their thing defensively. But they just cannot finish it off, bro. They just cannot finish these possessions off, bro. They couldn't, bro. Got that ball down to Mark Williams, and they have nobody protect that paint. Nobody. So at that point, they're cooked. Then Luka takes this shot. That's GG's right there, bro. 